I'm not going to do memory lane. I'd never get through. But one thing my dad did say a couple of weeks ago when I was preaching to him, he told the girl before we started, said, that's my son. She said, I know it. He's my favorite. <laughs> and I know that all these preachers up here at one time or another have been dad's favorite. But at that time, I was his favorite. And I'm going to preach a similar type of message that I preached to him because there are people here this afternoon that may not make it to heaven like he did. And I would be remiss if I didn't say something about how to get there. So I titled this, Keep the Faith of Jesus, My Dad's Life and Death. Revelation 14, 12 says, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. You know, Dad exemplified us, everyday living, what a Christian was. Sometimes it was in rough correction, but it was always with an example. And I loved him dearly. But I kind of liked him preaching this message to a show I watched called Iron Chef America. There was a chef on there from the Pacific Northwest. His name was Chef Douglas. And he was going up against a formidable foe, Chef Mossam. Chef Moriyamoto. I just skipped the first name. But anyway, he was expert in fixing fish. But so was Chef Douglas. And they chose to present him with salmon from the Pacific Northwest. Line caught wild salmon, which is exquisite. <coughs> so they asked the Chef Douglas, when he went to present his dishes, what did you do? And he said, I just wanted to give you a taste of what salmon should taste like. And I just got out of the way. I didn't do much to it. I just left the sh salmon shine. That's what Dad would, did with his life. He just let Christ shine. So as I go on, I have a few scriptures and you know, you can't rush God. I'm sorry about that, but you can't do it. For some reason, it's not going to the next page. Well, I'll just keep on this page and talk about the scriptures. The next scriptures I was going to, talking about being good stewards of the <coughs> manifold grace of God. And you know... Nope, that didn't work either, Dan. You know, uh, when we are good stewards of the manifold grace of God, it takes a body to make a bride for Christ. And you think about it, how precious one man's love is for the Lord, but we're all precious in His sight. And he's not willing that any should perish but all come to repentance. And it's very important that we realize what good repentance does. Many people just associate themselves with God and say they believe in God, but that doesn't make him, them his people and him their God. When he's God to you, you're going to not only love him like a God, 
but you're going to want that personal, real relationship with him. That faith that can move mountains. They asked Christ, said, why couldn't we cast out this devil? There was a young child with a lunatic devil in him. And Christ was on the mountain, transfigured. Well, there goes the screen. But anyway, it was transfigured. And then he come down out of all that glory and the disciples they were off the mountain couldn't cast out that devil and they will not know why. And he said, these come out but by prayer and fasting. The second set of scriptures I want to go to is found in Jeremiah 17 and 5. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like a heath in the desert, and shall not see good when it cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places of the wilderness, in a salt land and not inhabited. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, and it spreadeth out her roots in the, by the river shall not see when the heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart, I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways, and according to the fruit of his doings. As the partridge sitteth on eggs, and hatcheth them not, so he that getteth riches, and not by right, shall leave them in the midst of his days, and at his end shall be a fool. A glorious high throne from the beginning is the place of our sanctuary. O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed, and they that depart from me shall be written in the earth. Because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of the living waters, heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. I often read ten verses of scripture with each text that I go under for these things, because I want the people to know what I'm saying is coming from the Word of God. When it says, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, there are a lot of people here of many denominations, like in the nursing home. I can't afford to be denominational, but I can afford to preach the Word. And you better not trust in the preaching of a man. You better trust in the Word of God. You better balance every sermon with the word of God. If it doesn't follow the word, word, let every man be a liar and God be true. So you see, my dad was faithful to the Lord. And when the Lord searched his heart and tried his reins, he always stood faithful. I don't know of any one time that my dad failed to serve God in the depth of his trials. You know when they were blasting off the first Atlas V rocket and a tragedy in the cockpit. Fire broke out and the men could not escape. And it burnt those men up and it was one of the worst tragedies up to that point in American space technology. And they made a motto then from then on. Failure is not an option. And I've often said that when I was preaching. This is one time failure is not an option. I don't know why so many people choose it, but they do. In Matthew, the 25th chapter, it talks about the ten virgins. Even five of those virgins were foolish 
and didn't make it. So you can't say by being a good man or a worthy man of, of men's stature that they make it to heaven. It's only by the word of God that we make it. Well, it's not working again, Dan. But anyway, the last scripture I want to talk about is in 1 John, the third chapter. And at the last of that chapter, it talks about if you have confidence, if you have confidence, know that God rewards that confidence. But if you don't have confidence, God is greater than all things and all men, and he knows your heart. With that confidence, we have peace with God. Without that confidence, we have trouble. I'm sorry I couldn't read all those scriptures I wanted to read, but I didn't have much time anyway. So it's probably a good thing. But thank the Lord for His Word. I love my dad dearly. I'd never make it through a sermon thinking of memories. But I know he loved the Word. Are they in Amen. Praise the Lord. Do you love the word? Yes. Amen. 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 At this time, we'll go ahead and have another congregational. I'll fly away. You're looking forward to flying away with the Lord? Amen. I see the Lord on. Praise the Lord.